Hello everybody. Sorry, I think that got cut off. Hello everybody. This is episode 11 of the Absolute Blender, Absolute Beginner tutorial for Blender 3D. Sorry, the name's a little long. I just really put it to make sure it was more noticeable. Um, what we're going to do today is a couple of quick tips and the things we're going to talk about are number one, how to put a background image behind your model to use as a reference. And number two, how to use the mirror modifier for symmetric objects. So the first thing let's look at is the background image. I found an image on Wikipedia of the Taj Mahal, and I'll be using that today, but you can really use anything for this tutorial. So first thing you need to do is hit N. The N key will bring up the properties of the 3D view window over here. And near the bottom, it depends on which mode you're in, edit mode or object mode, but near the bottom, usually second to last, there's this uh, section called background images. So you can expand it, make sure you check it, click add image, um, don't worry about the axis yet. You can actually do a movie clip if you want, I've never tried that, but click image and then click open. And like I said, I have a Taj Mahal picture that I got off Wikipedia. And then you'll notice it's there's no background image yet and that's because of two things number one you need to be in orthographic view which is numpad 5 to switch from perspective and then number two you need to be in a perfect view which is 1 3 or 7 and you can also do control 1 3 or 7 I'm gonna hit 7 and come into an XY plane let me get rid of this uh, default cube and turn off the cursor there. All right, so what this is useful for, and you can see there's some, sorry, before we get into what's useful for, there's some settings. You can change the opacity, make it uh, clearer or more solid. You can change the size, scale it, or you can move it along either of the axes that it's lined up with. And also, when you come up to axis, this is actually where it will show up. It's in all views now, so it'll show up in all of the perfect views. But you can set it to only one or two of the perfect views, and that's useful because you can actually come back and add another image. So say you have a front shot of an object, like a face, and you want to put that on, say, the back, and then you add another image of a side shot, and you want to change that one to like a left or a right. So you can set up different images depending on the view you're in and that can help you because when you rotate your model it should line up with all of the images. For now I'm just going to stick with one image and show you really simply how to use it. So you can see it's there but I still have all of my tools available to model. And what I'm going to do is just kind of really roughly and I apologize for the quality of this but I'm going to really roughly trace out this dome to show you why it's useful and that should be good for now. So I'm going to select all of that and I'm going to make sure it is lined up well. Yeah. So we want to take this along the z-axis and move it right up to the z-axis and then come back make sure it's still lined up here and if you remember the spinning that we did to make that hat in the previous one I'm just gonna spin this really quick uh, I'm gonna do say like 30 steps to get more detail and 360 we want it to go all the way around the center I might have to change that later I just set it to the origin and we want to spin it around the x-axis see I always mess this up this is difficult maybe the y-axis is what we wanted and not the x there we go okay so we just spun that around to make the dome and you can see <coughs> excuse me you can see how it fits and like I said it was a really rough job but still it looks pretty decent for a dome and if we want to get off of here we can scroll around it see it pretty cool nice dome Alright, so that is how to do a background image, and again, it should only show up in the um, perfect views. And it's very nice for tracing out things and, and getting a good reference photo. So, 
scrapping that, I'm going to close this background image, get rid of it, and I'm going to get rid of this dome, but stay in edit mode for now, and stay in orthographic view. Now what I'm going to switch over to, hitting N again to get rid of that, is show you the mirror modifier. So the mirror modifier is good for anything that has symmetry, and there's tons of objects that have symmetry. Even though it's not perfect symmetry, for example, like a human face has very good symmetry. Um, the exterior of a car usually has great symmetry, and you know tables, chairs, things like that all have symmetry. So one thing to get that, if you have a really detailed mesh, one thing to get that perfect symmetry besides having to go in and painstakingly do it is to use a mirror modifier and what I'm going to do if, is I'm going to use a simple shape just for the sake of this tutorial so it doesn't run too long I'm just going to use a simple heart shape because that's kind of where I found out about this but if you come up and make a simple heart shape and this again I'm no artist but don't judge um, you make a simple heart shape then what you can do instead of having to painstakingly come over to the other side and make all of those line up and make it perfectly symmetric is you can select it all come over to the modifiers tab which is the wrench um, add the mirror modifier and don't apply it yet just kind of like the subdivision surface um, don't apply it yet and I'll show you why but if you switch to object mode it'll show you the mirror image of it and when you switch back to edit mode, it'll just show you what you're working on. And you may have to change the axis that's, axis that's mirrored. Um, and the merge limit is something to keep in mind. That's, for example, on this point where they meet. Um, the merge limit will, if they're within a certain distance of each other, it'll merge those vertices for you, which is nice. Um, but, so what you want to do is, remember, finish your shape, finish your half of your shape, um, set this up but don't apply it yet go to object mode make sure it looks decent and then click apply in object mode remember you cannot apply modifiers in edit mode so click apply in object mode and then when you go back to edit mode you'll see you have this shape that you wanted and for example the the edge here let me actually scroll up Okay, so this vertex is um, linked to both sides because of that merge limit. But if you come down to the bottom, uh, yes. Okay, so if you come down to the bottom, then what you'll see is these were not within the merge limit, so they didn't get merged. And so what you can do about that is you can actually control Z to get rid of the modifier and do it again, making sure that's close to the axis, or you can just move them close together and then remove doubles or merge them with the W and merge. So that's the mirror modifier. And for example, what you'd want to do is uh, maybe get a, a side view of a person's face and trace it out, but then mirror that to make the other person, the other half of the face. There's a lot of different ways you can work with it. The mirror modifier is extremely versatile and very, very good. Um, so that concludes the tutorial for today. Sorry, again, it's a short one, but two very, very interesting tools, very useful, and I hope you can use them in your own projects. So thanks for staying tuned. I'll have a longer tutorial up next week. So thanks for watching.